Hello there, my friends. Uh, my name's Carl Zipper. I run the Backwoods Engineering programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation, um, Sussex County's leading destination for fun and excitement. I'm here to talk with you folks today about um, how to splice rope. Um, you know, specifically, we're going to talk about a splice called the short splice. Um, that's a splice that's used to join two ends of rope together. Um, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, you know, the time and the place to splice rope is when you want, you know, a permanent connection or when you need a very, very strong connection because a splice is permanent. The only way to get it out is to cut the rope on either side of the splice. And it also retains about 95% of the rope's strength. Um, and that's in comparison to most knots, you know, which will cut down on the strength of your rope by about half because the fibers get bent so much. Um, the short splice, you know, joins two ropes end to end, you know, so it would substitute for um, something like a sheep bend or a carrick bend or, you know, if you're a rube, maybe a square knot. Um, and conceptually, it's a very, very easy splice to form. Um, in practice, it's a little bit tricky because it's a lot easier to do if you have three arms and hands instead of only two. But, um, you know, let's, let's show you how to get it done. Um, first thing I'm going to do before I start with any of the big rope is I'm going to cut myself off a short length of um, twine here because I'm going to need this to hold the thing together while I'm forming the splice. Once the splice is done, I won't need this, but it sure helps out a lot um, when we're getting started. Now I'm splicing two ends of rope together, so I have to unlay each end of the rope down to its three strands, its three component strands. And I'm going to do this enough so that I can form, um, tuck, the, tuck the strand three times. Um, that's going to mean probably eight to ten inches on each side. So let's get that done. You know, I say eight to ten, but I always aim for ten because uh, nothing exceeds like excess. You don't want to get done and find that you're a couple inches short. So once you have your, um, once you have your three strands unlaid on each one, what you got to do now is you got to mate the two ends of rope together. And the way you do that is um, you put them together so that each of the three strands, you know, sort of go in between the other one. It's, um, it's a lot easier to show than it is to explain, you know, at least if you're simple-minded like I am. Um, so I'll show you again. You got three strands each coming out, you know, in a different direction on each rope. Oop. Yeah, different direction if gravity would cooperate here. And what you do is you put them together so that each, each one of these strands on the one rope sort of slots between two on the other rope. So, and when you push them together like this, when you push them together far enough, you actually get sort of like a nice satisfying little click almost. And they, um, they sort of lock together just a tiny bit. Once I've got that, this is where I, um, where I tie my rope around here, my little piece of twine, to hold everything together temporarily. Um, cinch that up. There we go. All right, so that's how you start the short splice. Um, okay, so now that we have the strands um, all married up with each other, you know, now we have to start tucking these strands. And we're going to do three sets of tucks on this side of the marriage and three sets of tucks on this side of the marriage. Um, this is where it really comes in handy to have that third set of hands, or third single hand, rather, that I was talking about before, because... Um, when you're doing these tucks, especially the first one on each side, you know, the whole mess really wants to fall apart on you. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a pain. So, the way we're going to make those tucks is we're going to start with the strand that's, um, you know, topmost, let's call it. And we're going to take it, we're going to bring it over the one strand, right below it, and then tuck it under the next one. And um, to help with that, I've got my trusty, rusty um, Swedish Fid here. This is a tool I can stick it underneath there and when I push it through I have a nice little trough that I can um, put the strand through in. So let me do that now. You see when I'm putting the strand through I'm putting it through so that it'll cross at about 90 degrees. That gives me a bit more strength. Okay I'm gonna turn the whole thing towards me 120 degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing, over one, under the next. Tuck it 
suck it through. All right, and one more. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Okay. And we'll take a quick look at these to check them. If I've done it right, all three are coming out in different directions and they'll subdivide, you know, an imaginary circle here into nice even thirds. Or nice even-ish thirds, I should say. Okay, so now that we have our first set of three tucks on the one side of the marriage, it's time to move over and do three sets of tucks on the other side of the marriage. And we're gonna do it exactly the same way. Um, you know, and if we don't screw up, we'll wind up with exactly the same, you know, result. The three strands coming out, three different directions, subdivide the circle. So let's do that. We'll start out with the topmost strand. We're gonna fold it over one and tuck it under the next. Turn the whole thing to us, 120 degrees. Same thing again. We're gonna tuck it over one and under the next. Let's see whether I bungled it or not. And look at that, it's almost like I know what I'm doing here. I've got three coming out, three different directions, subdividing my imaginary circle into three nice pieces. So, before I start my next couple sets of tucks, what I'm gonna do is, it's pretty loose here where I've married the ropes. So I'm gonna cut my little um, piece of helper twine off, now that the thing's secure, and I'm gonna just slowly work around, give each of these six strands a nice little tug, and that should clean this up a bit. It's very easy if you're not careful to wind up when the splice is done with, um, you know, an area in the middle here where everything's sort of loose and sloppy. And we'd like to avoid that um, if we can. Okay, so I've tightened everything up a bit. Now, I just gotta do the same set of tucks that I was doing before two more times on each side of this. Um, in order to get that 90, 95% strength, you wanna have three sets of tucks in your splice on each strand, and since I've got six strands to tuck, three coming out each way, that means I have to do three sets of tucks on each side of my splice. And just like before, give each strand a little tug and then check. And now I'm gonna come back to the other side here. I like to sort of work back and forth. Uh, I find it's easier to keep the middle of the thing, you know, as tight as I'd like to if I do it this way. Okay, so the splice is just about done. Um, the only thing I have left to do, you know, is snip off these ends so it's a little bit tidier. But before I can do that, what I need to do is I need to um, take my mallet here and perform some precision adjustments. Um, the reason that a splice is able to stay together, you know, is because of the friction between all the strands where they're tucked. So what you want is you want these strands when the splice is done to sort of be bedded in with the strands next to them as much as possible, so there's as much contact between them as possible. Um, with a small rope and a small splice, you know, you can just take it between your hands and go like this, or maybe mash it under your feet on a nice, clean, smooth surface. But this is a big splice with a big rope, and so we're gonna use a nice um, rawhide mallet here to bed everything in. You know, if you don't do this, um, the first time you load the thing up, you know, with any sort of load, um, it's gonna wind up happening anyway, you know, assuming that the splice doesn't fail. Uh, 
which is more likely if you don't do this in the first place. All right, so there we go. Um, you can see, you know, it's, it's certainly a lot smoother, a lot more bedded in now. Um, there is one thing about the, um, about the short splice that I'm not quite so hot to trot on, and that is that like, um, like just about every splice, it increases the diameter of your rope at the point where it's spliced. And um, that's not a problem most of the time, but it becomes a problem if you ever want to use the rope in a block and tackle, because um, the block and tackle should be sized, you know, for the diameter of your rope. So a rope with two diameters, like a rope with a short splice in it has, um, you're going to have to compromise somewhere, and you're probably going to have to use a pulley that's too big, and that'll add cost, and it'll also, you know, be a slightly weaker system because the rope isn't quite as well supported where it rolls through the pulley. So. The short splice is good for a lot of applications where you need to join two ropes. But if you ever want to use a spliced rope in a pulley system, uh, there's a different um, splice you have to use called the long splice that'll put a splice through here without changing the rope's diameter in any significant amount. Um, so with all that said, that's the short splice. Um, I hope you learned a thing or two about it, and I hope you have a nice day. Thanks very much. But by pulling all of these strands a little bit at a time, this should clean up pretty nicely for me. Pretty easy, but in practice. Oh, shoot, I bungled this. I wondered if you did. Yeah. <laughs> Folded this one back on itself. I was going to say, I think we miscounted somewhere in there. Nah. Cut! Yeah. Nah. You know, we're just going to start this mess over. Huh? Wait a minute. Oh, I see what I did. I just had to pull this one a little tighter. Wait, no, I, I did bungle something. All right, take three. Third time to try? Well, we'll see. Huh? It'd be nice to figure out what's going on here before I start again. Ah, oh, there's what's going on here. All right, third time was the charm.